So I got a story time submission to my Reddit inbox and you can find me at Urban Bougie over on Reddit. That's another way to get in touch with me. This woman um, wants to remain anonymous and she certainly will because people have the most random names over on Reddit. But that's beside the point. It just kind of makes me laugh when people want to remain anonymous over on Reddit when their names are so random. Anyways, so this is her story time. Oh, and this is just a reminder that dustiness comes in all shapes and varieties. They come across culture, races, class, professions, and all of that. Keep that in mind. Okay, so this person, we're just going to call her G. I'm in the middle of a very contentious divorce. I originally met my husband on a dating website and got married in 2009. We were both professional. He a lawyer and I'm in the medical field. We dated for about three years and got married in 2009. I had my first son in 2011 and then my daughter in 2014. There were a lot of red flags in this relationship, but I'm not sure if I um, was uncomfortable. I unconsciously chose to ignore them or because I was always so busy um, at work. My job is always very demanding and required a lot of time out of the home. Everything seemed to be going well at first, but he was very quiet and reserved. Also, when I met him, he had given his father the silent treatment, for which up to this day, not sure of the reason. He also never disclosed any of his financial information. Originally, we had a joint account and he would put a portion of his money into the account. But throughout the marriage, I soon became the person that contributed to the majority of the household. I knew that he was supporting his mother when I met him because his mother was living in his premarital home and paid all of the expense of her living in there as she was retired. So I thought most of his money was going there. It seems like in the beginning, he always encouraged me to go to work to ensure that I was making as much money as possible in order to maintain the household. And to be honest, for some reason, I never complained because I was always optimistic and tried to look at the thing on the bright side. However, throughout the years, he was always dismissive and negative towards me. Now, for me, I just want to talk about this right here. For us to use this as a cautionary tale, we have got to have more open and honest discussions about finances, so that's one step that, you know, all of these story times can be used as a cautionary tale in finances and understanding the parental dynamics is very important. OK, she continues with, I was very sick throughout both of my pregnancies. And looking back, I never had the emotional support from him or financial support during that time. With my first child, I was so sick with hyperemesis. I had a Zofran pump and eventually had to take um, take three months off prior to my due date due to my illness. I was also sick with my daughter, but I mustered it out. I mustered it out and worked almost to my due date because I could not see how I could financially afford to keep up with our lifestyle and not work. He was even less supported, uh, supportive during the second pregnancy. Oh, and I forgot to mention, both pregnancies was via I IVF. He had low sperm count and we were not able to get pregnant naturally. When I had my daughter, she came out extremely ill. She ended up spending six months between NICU and rehab, and I came home with her with a feeding tube and a BiPAP to assist her in breathing. As a result of all of these difficulties, I ended up taking a year out of work to take care of her. Jesus, some of the things that women go through simply to have a kid, and he was an active participant if they were doing IVF. So it, it, just, it just goes to show you the, the lengths men will go through to help you get a baby, but not take care of them. This is wild to me. Okay, she says, I believe this is when things started to get work. A lot of things that you talk about in your channel resonate with what I have been going through throughout this relationship with this person. And most recent, and I'm most recently realizing the abuse that has been going on for years. So this is the reason why I say I talk about a lot of these things, because sometimes folks don't exactly know that something is wrong until someone like me says, uh, uh, that that's a red flag. That's let's wave this red flag. And this is the reason why I say a lot of things with empathy instead of castigation, 
because sometimes folks just don't know, and that is perfectly fine. So we're highlighting things because because I said these things and because she watches me, she's able to see, ah, I missed that. And now she's talking about it. Okay, she continues. She says, okay, so right now we're going through divorce. I tried mediation with him because he failed to disclose his financial information. We could not go through. Then I tried negotiation and it did not work. Currently, we are undergoing divorce via a trial. He gave me silent treatment about two years ago when I set my boundaries after he refused to continue with marriage counseling. At that time, we were in um, three years of marriage counseling, and I really should have figured it out that it wasn't going to work then. I told him he needed to start contributing 50% of the household income if we were going if we were not going to continue to work on our marriage. And as retaliation, he stopped speaking to me. We are still currently living in the same household, and he does not say a word to me. The court has ordered us to use an app in order to communicate about the children's affair, which we do. He is currently seeking 50-50 custody, although he never took care of the kids 50-50 while married. I was always expected, expected to take care of the children, provide financially, and support the household. He is also after my business. I became self-employed after having my daughter when I decided to go back to work. I'm in the medical profession. I had to take out a loan to open my business. He never contributed a day to my business and he was always working himself. When we were both working, if I could not keep up with the household, I ended up paying for hired help. I recently figured out through the divorce process that there, were, that there was a lot of money being hidden. He, he transferred in order He transferred an order of $100,000 to other accounts that he has refused to disclose, even with court orders. I believe he's seeking 50-50 because he does not want to provide me with child support. He also wants to take over the marital household as well. Okay, so she says, I think I'm jumping around. Let me finish out from when, after I had my daughter, after staying home for a year. He encouraged me to become self-employed because it would have been difficult for me to go back to work in a hospital or medical setting and still be able to attend to my daughter as she required a lot of medical attention and doctor's appointments. So I spend most of my time between working and trying to get my daughter to a better place. However, during that time, I had noticed several occasions where he would sabotage what I was trying to do. For example, I would take my daughter to the doctor's office and they would make a certain recommendation. I would tell him about those recommendations, and if I was not home to carry out those recommendations, he would do the exact opposite of what he was told to do. After trying to run my own business and working for several years, I was extremely burnt out. So one day I asked him to downsize because I felt we were living above our means, and I couldn't continue to work and keep up with the household. I also wanted to move to another neighborhood because at that time, my daughter was going to kindergarten. And I realized that the school district I was currently in did not have all the support that my daughter needed. However, we ended up moving in a neighborhood that had the required support, but he refused to downsize because I think he felt like it would damage his image. At that time, I asked him to contribute more as he was still only contributing the same amount of money that he was giving me at the time when we first got married without kids. And he told me he had no money. So we moved without resolving the issue. I continued to notice his distant and emotional detachment in our relationship. It was as if he was using me as a vessel to support his lifestyle. I never really felt love or appreciated. So that when I asked for us to go to counseling, we went to counseling for three years. And with each each other counseling section, um, he never followed the homework that was given to him. Yes, girl. He was just using you for a lifestyle. And that's it unfortunately. So she says she's 49. He's 48. They're both Caribbean. <clears throat> Her parents were Haitian and he's from Trinidad. I don't know if this plays into the dynamics or whatnot, because I don't know a whole, whole lot about the Caribbean culture, but you guys can fill me in. But for whatever reason, like I said, um, dustiness comes in all stratospheres, all varieties, all kind of classes. And so do users. This man was using her for a lifestyle and he got a pretty good deal for a while. We will see how this ends because they're still not divorced. Things still haven't been taken care of. 
you guys go ahead and weigh in. Let me know what you think. Like, comment, share.